Hey, it's time for VoiceOver Body Shop. Tech Talk. 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 Number 109. 109, baby. Boy, unbelievable. 109 Tech Talks. Anyway, we've got a very special one tonight. Uh... We've got Ryan White joining us from Rode Microphones tonight, too. Great to have you with us, because there's lots of cool stuff that Rode has. That, Say hi, Ryan. Yeah. Hello, everyone. Thanks All for having right. Me. Lots of great stuff that... Uh, we're George podcast Hyde. movement here yeah. in Denver, and uh, we're, lin- we're in the middle of the expo show floor, which I thought would be a relatively calm place to do it, but we had sound checking and booth building going on. All around, so it seems to have calmed down now. So we should have a nice little time to chat with Ryan here. All righty, voiceover body shop tech talk. Lots of cool stuff coming up right now. Voiceover body shop tech talk is brought to you by. VoiceOverEssentials.com, the home of Harlan Hogan's signature products. Source Elements, the folks who bring you Source Connect. VOHeroes.com, become a hero to your clients with award-winning voiceover training. VoiceActor.com, your voiceover website ready in minutes. VoiceOver Extra, your daily resource for voiceover success. And by World Voices, the industry association of freelance voice talent. And now, here's your hosts, Dan and George. Well, hello there. I'm Dan Leonard. I'm George Woodham. And this is VoiceOver Body Shop or VO BS. Tech Talk. 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 Okay. <laughs> so, George, tell us again where you are and why it's. A little noisy in the background there. Yeah, I mean, the, the, we've gotten the noise floor down a bit. I'm going to do the share the mic technique here between the two of us since the noise level came down a bit. Um, spoke too soon. As it there, picks up again, right? Yeah, there goes the scissor lift. So I'll, I'll go close mic again. Um, yeah, we're here at Podcast Movement. And uh, I was able to get in here. A lot of it thanks in part to uh, BSW and Road. Um, they hooked me up with a greatly discounted pass which was really helpful because showing up to podcast movement is it's not cheap um it's it's there's a fair cost involved to attend the show and, and it's because of the sheer volume of content is massive so i'm going to be here all week just trying to suck in as much useful information as well as try to share some of my own information with people and do some networking so after we get through the intro of the show ryan's going to give us some a little rundown of the Roadcaster duo during the Tech Talk segment. Excellent, tech news. excellent. Yeah, so if you're just joining us for the first time here at VoiceOver Body Shop Tech Talk, we talk about home voiceover studio stuff. And since George is at Podcast Movement, we, there are some parallels of audio for, for, uh, for podcasting as there is for voiceover. And George and I know how to deal with both of those things because... We both do them. Yeah. Uh, it's, we, and we've been doing it a long we time. We talk the talk and walk the walk. And, and we've been walking that walk and talking that talk for 12 years now uh, at VoiceOver Body Shop. So not only do we, have we been doing the show a long time, but we've been doing home voiceover studios and recording stuff for much longer than that. Uh, and if you need to have your studio built right, it doesn't have to be... It doesn't have to be the Taj Mahal. It can be your walk-in closet. There's all sorts of places you can do it, but you have to know how. And it's not the equipment, it's how you use it. But if you need to know what it is you got to have and how to use it, you can work with one of us. For example, if you want to work with George, where do they go? You can head over to georgethe.tech. And uh, not only can you work with me, you can work with a whole bunch of us because we are actually a collective of of the greatest tech people in our midst um and we have an amazing amazing amount of resources of course we have the huge library of content we've already generated in our webinars area we've got a lot of free resources we've got our gear recommendations and trusted vendors pages and of course you can just get a sound check the most valuable thing that we do is a sound check 
over at georgez.tech. Dan, I like the name that you gave your sound check. <laughs> what do you do at, what do you do over your place? Well, over at homevoiceoverstudio.com, I have my specimen collection cup. Yes. Uh, which, you know, you can deposit an MP3 of your audio <laughs> and and I want it raw. You know, this is just going in the sewer all still the, warm. Yeah, it's uh, <laughs> I want Fresh. your raw audio. I don't yeah. want to hear what kind of processing you're doing and all this stuff that yeah. you probably shouldn't be doing. I want to hear the clean, raw sound of your studio. So if we have to make adjustments, we can do that. Uh, it's just $25 for the analysis. I will give you a very thorough analysis. Ask anybody that I've done that for, and they'll tell you, yeah, that was really, really thorough. So anyway, mm -hmm. uh, you know, and of course you can communicate with both of us if you just write to us at the guys at vobs.tv right there so uh all sorts of ways to get a hold of us so anyway it's time for george's tech update and since he's at podcast movement and he has a guest with him whose card just happens to be still sitting on my desk right here <laughs> what a quinky dink i know uh <laughs> why don't you tell people about ryan and what he's doing there well i've got ryan white here with me um We've met for the first time in person at VO Atlanta, right? Indeed. When we were both at VO Atlanta. And um, I've known and worked with Road Products for a really long time. They've also been a supporter of, uh, they've been a supporter of another show I'm on called the Pro Audio Suite. And so I have a long relationship with Road. So thanks to them, I'm here because uh, of that relationship. You know, it, and I would not have probably have come had it not been for that little boost from them. So that out of the way um i thought this would be a really cool opportunity to be able to sit down and actually talk to to ryan uh, in a relatively quiet environment and since he's showing a new product today we could get a little sneak preview of it it's it's pretty new just starting to ship right 100 percent. just starting to ship it's uh 4.99 full price and it is two channels less than the previous version so it's for those people who are looking for the compact version of the roadcaster pro 2. that's right it's the roadcaster pro shrunken um, which, you know, a lot of folks have looked at the Roadcaster Pro 2 in the voiceover realm because it looks, well, first of all, it looks freaking cool. It's covered in lights, you know, has a lot of cool features, but it's too big, so they, they shrunk it. And this is the Roadcaster Pro Duo. So, so who is this for? Obviously, it was mostly podcasters in mind, but who else do you think are going to find they get a good use out of the roadcaster duo the first thing i always mention for both the roadcaster pro 2 and the duo are that they they have the new preamps inside of them so you're getting 76 db of as clean of gain as you can possibly get inside of a uh prosumer style piece of gear so you're not going to have to break the bank specifically on a preamp and then integrate that into your circuit or otherwise or a bunch of different outboard gear to get that clean gain right from the desk, you're gonna be able to actually achieve that yeah. with those preamps that are inside of it. So those are our new Revolution Pre's. So here it is. Wow, that, that, now, now I'm, I'm using a Roadcaster, you know, the, the, the first one. Yeah. This is, looks, yeah, it's, it's, what's really different about it? It really it's looks, it's probably, it's condensed. It's all the same stuff. It's just, it's still, yeah, it's, just, just condensed. So, so it's obviously a smaller footprint. So it's going to be a lot more friendly to a compact or cramped desk, right? Exactly. So uh, the Rodecaster Pro 1, I won't get too deep into the differences in the 2 versus the 1. That's where we really took the idea of the Rodecaster Pro and, and just drove it home. Uh, like I said, with those preamps and just a lot more features on board, um, dual USB output and various features like that. With the Duo versus the Rodecaster Pro 2, we wanted to keep the exact same board. That's why the price is where it's at, is because you're getting the exact same feature set minus two channels. So you lose two faders for your mic, two mic channels, uh, I should say. And uh, it's still mic, line, and all of the inputs, instrument inputs, all that stuff, but you only get two. So if I show you the back side of it right here, you're just going to see the two. Right next to it, you're going to get the the two channels of headphone output instead of four channels of headphone output. It still has your line level outputs for speakers or for a send if you're wanting to use it in that uh, manner. And then on the front, you're gonna notice that there's six pads instead of eight. One thing we did add to this that the two does not have is we put the TRRS jack right back where it belongs uh. on the board. 
So it's actually in front now, and it goes perfectly with our NTH100Ms, which will have the microphone. I have the NTH100s. Technically, I do have the NTH100Ms because I have the microphone right over there. I want to try that out. And we should tr you should try that out before we leave the show. Should we will. Exactly. So now you actually have that feature set uh, back on the Roadcaster Duo. So that, that jack on the front is a TRRS jack, right? Cool. It's a headset jack. It is a headset jack as well as a microphone input. So, so when you're on the channel, you can actually out. assign it as an input for a channel. Very cool. So that, that no matter what kind of headset you have, whether it's like a more of a mobile device headset or a gamer headset, you can plug it in. Yeah. Yeah. When, when, when you guys came out with this originally, you know, uh, George and I were looking at it and, you know, it was designed specifically, I think, for podcasting. Uh, because you've got four channels and all that kind of stuff. But we immediately saw that it would be very, very valuable for, for voice actors. Uh, you know, not that you need four inputs unless you have three other people around you. Uh, but it had a lot of cool features that made it very useful for voice actors, uh, especially if you're doing remote stuff and, and those sorts of things. Have, have a lot of people come back to you from the voiceover business and said, hey, this, this actually works for voiceover, too, because it sounds great. It's got those great preamps and, and so much versatility. And, of course, I still love the pads and all that stuff that you can throw in there, which is, you exactly. know, or, 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 or like when things get quiet, I throw a girl from Ipanema on there. It just makes it a lot easier. That's the uh, J Air button. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. <laughs> yeah. And we did. We, we put everything on this. And so uh, whether you're talking about the Rodecaster Pro 2 or the Rodecaster Duo, you are still talking to voiceover actors uh, the exact same as you are for podcasters. We actually call this a production desk now, a production studio instead of a podcast studio. And so we can talk all day long about the game structure of a Rodecaster Pro 1, a cloud lifter, need it, don't need it, dynamic mic, condenser mic. In your world in voiceover, we're working on condenser microphones, which typically have that gain structure, but you need it to be as clean as humanly possible. So once they actually brought that into the two, shut down that conversation real quick about clean gain. And then with the duo, now it's for those people specifically that are uh, maybe multifaceted, but not needing four people, right? And if you don't need four different plugins, even if you're doing guitars or music or some kind of other thing into your production, then the duo can suit you. If you are, in fact, using four different channels and you need that all on one board with clean gain, you can go right back to the two, no problem. Yeah, yeah if you know how to use one, you know how to use the other. They, they have the same underpinnings, and then tell us a little bit about the um, capabilities on board that you get with this, uh, which again are shared with the two. Yeah, so one of my favorite things, so we talked about the preamps. Uh, with the Rodecaster Pro 1, the original versus the two and then the duo was combo jack. So I do have the versatility to plug in even high-end uh, outboard gear if I would like to add that into my signal chain, a console for matter. Uh, you those, know, for those are the combo jacks there. They look like an XLR with a big hole in the middle. Those are combo jacks. If you ever hear that term, that's what we're talking about. Exactly. Thanks for clarifying. Absolutely, because that will accept a quarter inch for a guitar or, like I said, your TR, uh, TRS cables from a console or otherwise. So you can integrate it into existing signal flow as well, whereas you couldn't with the original. But again, to the design of it, we wanted it to be an all-in-one place. Right now, I am literally plugging it into a portable power bank, and it is powering the entire unit. Wow. And so we are literally as portable as we possibly can. And inside of the board with these two channels or the four on the two, you have de-essing, roll-offs, compression, all that processing that, again, you may not want to use if you don't have a good initial sound. But once you have that good initial sound, then you add those features onto it. And I always just tell people that you're half produced for the final product, right? Uh, if you do it right, you might even be right there towards mastering and finishing your product for uh, distribution. One thing I like is I've, I just set up a Roadcaster Pro 2 for Cloud 10 Media. And uh, one thing I found in setting it up and using it, I actually have one myself as well, but I don't use the record function. I love that you can record dry and monitor wet. And what does that mean? It means that the, the talent on the show, listening in headphones, the people interacting with each other, can be benef they can be benefited by having some processing in their headphones, right? It, it can reduce some of the background noise or distractions and it can clean up what they hear in the headphones. There's a couple reasons why some processing would be nice. But you can track that recording without the processing. And you can choose to send that recording to the computer via USB also 
without processing. And that's really a really cool feature because you're not stuck with the processing, right? What you hear live while you're doing a performance, whether it be podcasting, whether it be acting, really, is not necessarily what you want on the finished product. It can be, and if you're a good engineer and you're really good at doing that stuff live, it's not easy, but if you're good at it, then you can commit it. But otherwise, you don't have to worry about that, which is really clever about the uh, way this thing is designed. Um, we, f- we fully came into this with the idea, and honestly, with the, with the original, we, we learned a lot along the way as well. I don't know how many firmware updates we had from the one. I, I was there from the very beginning. I, I had it when it first came out, and I thought, wouldn't it be cool if, wouldn't it be nice if every three to six months, new firmware, it was like the product had a rebirth. It was mind-blowing. It 100% did, and then we did get to the point to where the processing inside just couldn't quite keep up. Uh, a lot of people asking for reverb and, and various effects, and now, as uh, many people know, the two and the duo have uh, reverb and echo, and you can become a monster and whatever whatever effect you want to add to your microphone channel. And then, to your point as well, one of the 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 last things I'll mention to anyone. And this is not meaning that this is the last thing I'm mentioning here. Is just <laughs> that two USB ports are available to you, but that what most people don't understand is that's three I/O. It gets very daunting and confusing. This is where things get off. I love talking about this stuff, but it gets a little complicated. So why are there two ports, and why is that three interfaces on two ports? And I won't get too crazy, too techy, right? But the idea here is that inside of your computer, you got to have a communication between the audio interface, which is essentially what this is acting like when you plug it into another device. And on the main channel, on USB 1, rather, you have main and chat. So in most cases what a lot of our audience is looking for is that conversation between let's use video gaming for an example right now for voiceover i like to talk about it a lot in signal flow you can choose two different places to go if you are in fact doing a live stream like we're doing right now or if you're trying to record in multi-track so that you can have a wet dry uh, post uh, dry and while you're there wet well i mean a common scenario for voiceover is you you are the engineer right you're you're recording yourself you're facilitating the communications patch that could be Zoom or whatever it is at Google Meet, whatever the heck they want to use, right? right? Then you get the dreaded, hey, will you play back that take? I think that was the one. Can you play that back? This can make that super easy, right? Which Absolutely. One of the so, reasons I liked it so much is that you could do that. Exactly. So with, uh, with the two USBs, you're literally sending and returning twice over to whatever uh, means you would like. And then if you plug in a second USB port, that USB 2, you get secondary engaged as well. What a lot of people in that production, especially to that level, will do is plug in a second computer and then have that playback, uh, pl- have producer mode, any kind of like ex- uh, extra send and or return. I love a second comu- computer for the output to a stream so that one, uh, chat and main are kind of being things that I'm manipulating live. Like you said, a Zoom conversation or something like that. But if I have a final destination that doesn't get changed much, I want that in a secondary place. So I'll use the second for that as well. And uh, you have different choices in uh, multi-channel or stereo, pre or post, and just a lot of signal flow things that could be daunting or scary. But the other thing that I'll bring back on is that you can plug it in today and just start recording and or sending and returning on your computer. And it's just as easy as plugging it in. Another nice feature, if you do use monitor speakers, is you know the cha- you know the frustration of having to always make sure that the mic in your studio and the monitors are not feeding each other or you're not getting that dreaded PA system feedback loop, this lets you control that, right? You can say, when my mic is on, my speakers are off. Exactly. We have the auto mute monitor output function. And then uh, to that extent, we also have like auto mute and Bluetooth so that if you know, you're not getting a feedback loop either physically through speakers or sin that you don't want to get that feedback loop through. And it's not necessarily a, um, you know, an auxiliary send or anything like that. It's just saying as soon as one of those microphones is sending any form of signal, boom, mute your speakers. Yeah. So what, what, I, what I really liked about it when I first saw it was having come out of broadcasting, it just reminded me of a broadcasting board, you know, that it's got, you know, you, can, you have an audition channel, you can mute the mic, you know, really easily just by, and, you know, and then you're, you're muted, so if you got a cough, you can you can do that. Uh, but it's it's just a great unit. I'm really cool. It's really cool that you guys have, you know, brought out a line of these, you know, to f- for every purpose. Yeah, they've iterated, you know, and and they've iterated because 
so well because they listen to the users. <laughs> like this thing, this thing was designed, the Rodecaster Pro 2 was designed by the users, right? In a way, right? Uh, absolutely. You, if you were on Facebook or whatever platform you wanted to pick, uh, our Instagram channel was hot, you know, where it was just, here's a new product or here's a new video about it. And then inside of those chats, you could see Rode microphones actually show up. So we were there in the conversation all along the way, trying to not only just answer questions about how to do it if you're in the if you're not aware of how to do it, but to then take notes on what was highly sought after with reason, right? And that's the other thing as a, as a manufacturer, you, you, you want to appease everybody that you can, maximize it as much as humanly possible. And I think we did an absolute terrific job, uh, like I said, right from the RCP1 where it kind of caught us off guard and then we just ran with it. And that never stopped with the two and it's still going to the best of our ability. We brought back the TRS jack. A lot of people asking for that. Yeah, they wanted yeah. to see it again, so you took that opportunity and put it on a product. So, yeah. what else do you have? I mean, we'll, we'll, I might, well, I guarantee that I'll have some time to shoot some packages while I'm here. Yeah. Um, what else did you bring along today well, with BSW? The, yeah, the, the, the one question that I think a lot of people are asking, because George and I have been talking about it for months now, since we were in Atlanta for, for VO Atlanta, and that's the, the NT 15th Gen which is just an amazing microphone, you know, at a great price point, and it's just, tell us about it, and then you can try and explain 32-bit flow to our audience, because they're all lost. First, tell us which side of the mic to speak into. Yeah, that's more important, too. The gold dot, our branding. You can see it on my T-shirt, underneath my badge and everything. But, yes, it is a side address microphone, large diaphragm, cardioid pattern, uh, condenser microphone if I didn't say that. And yes, you're going to talk right into the front side here. And Rode has long since the gold dot, uh, a wonderful branding piece for us, has been right underneath the capsule. So you're going to aim right for that spot, right under, right above that gold dot. And uh, it is cardioid. So if you do, in fact, talk into the other side of it, you're going to be reduced significantly in both frequency response and gain. So that's going to be a problem for you for sure. But the uh, fifth generation of this, as the name would suggest, it is our fifth rendition of the NT1. And that does include our NT1 anniversary, which is still around, alive and kicking. But what we did was uh, introduce our dual connectivity. So inside the XLR port, you have a USB port as well as an XLR port. And so the XLR port is just a, your traditional analog. With the lighting, where there's no way we're going to see that USB-C tucked in there. I but I promise it. you it's in it's there. there. Yep, great. And the uh, USB-C is then going to allow us to... 100% uh, use this as an audio interface and a digital microphone right into our computer. So if you open up a 32-bit float session on your computer in a DAW, you can then record this in 32-bit float. The simple thing that I'll tell you about 32-bit float is, like I said, this becomes your audio interface that your computer is communicating with. So it's transforming the microphone audio, that analog voltage, into a digital signal. We do this four times over, George. I don't know if you knew that, but we have four audio interviews. Yeah, this is something I started to grok uh, from the great <laughs> YouTube videos you guys have and then also talking to you. Yeah, and most people that have created 32-bit float, they're wonderful devices. They are magical, and it all comes from that, that algorithm that's inside of it that I'll get to in a sec. But uh, most people do two audio interfaces inside of there. So we actually did four with this. We put the Revolution preamps inside of it four times over, taking that into, like I said, a, it's essentially four audio interfaces, and we'll record it at four levels. So if you take the entire headroom of the microphone, we record it at four levels inside of the entire headroom of it, and then in a digital magical uh, algorithm, you can actually recall that in post in your 32-bit session. So if you go too loud and you're clipping, well, the microphone still recorded that properly at a lower gain. You just have to go move your window into that lower gain. And so it's an unclippable microphone at that point. And so do any performances you would like at an average level, and then you'll be able to save that if it clips or is too quiet in post. But you don't have to make that decision as, as the engineer producer. The thing that, reps, that, that took me a while to wrap my head around is you don't have to go, oh, I need to find, like there's, there's four signals, right? The, the combination of those four, the algorithmic combination, if you could just say that, is happening for you. Yes. That's the important part, right? You don't have to go into your DAW, find four essentially tracks of audio, find the right signal one, and then 
com- <laughs> comp them together, re-edit them. It just, it just happens. It just happens at the output. And all you have to do is make a signal correction. Do you, I mean, I've, I've been using Normalize to do that. Is that what you recommend? I, I think Normalize is a great place to start. And the, what I've been pitching to most people in this from an application standpoint, right? Forget about the nerdiness of how it happens, because I promise you, you could get lost in the math of it all. But we don't really care, right? When, in the end, we want to know how to use it properly and why to use it. And I talk about performance. It just doesn't stop the session. So if you record it at, at whatever level, again, you start at an average, and then you can go into that session and then fine tune it. Uh, we met with, uh, we also met the guys at Hindenburg at that same time at VO Atlanta and they showed me their auto gain function. So a normalize is a great way to do it. Hindenburg has software where it can auto gain it down, but you're going to get to choose. Let's say you don't want it to be even come, you don't even want it coming close to that uh, negative 0.1 uh, dBFS, right? If you want that negative 12 as a max peak, you just then normalize it to negative 12 max peak, right? And obviously every DAW or plugin that you use to do this will be there, but normalize is a great place to start to get it to the um, peak that you want, and then you'll need to still find your averages later. Yeah. Gotcha. Now, what's what's fascinating about this is road mics have are traditionally and legendarily very quiet, which is very important in this particular situation, because if you're normalizing a really low signal, a lot of times you will get the extra noise that a mic produces, but road mics don't seem to do that. Well, how do, how is it that you've accomplished such quiet mics? <laughs> I, I unfortunately can't speak on the manufacturing side of it, but I was, before even an employee of Rode Microphones, a fan of that because their NT1A, uh, even their tube microphones, the NTK, the NT1A, I believe, was uh, 5 dBA sound noise, or, uh, yeah, 5, and then the nt one fourth was 4, 5, and this one is 4. <laughs> so, uh, again, without the nerdy speak, 4 dBA of self noise is very, very, very quiet. So every bit of circuitry has some form of inherent noise. Again, we, we introduced the Revolution preamps, which are reaching the theoretic limit of how quiet a preamp can be with any form of circuitry, which it is a circuit. You have to have to something. Yeah. So Rode is always actively going after those two things. And as just a customer before being an employee, I was looking at the NT1A because of its frequency response curve, its low signal, its low noise floor. And then, uh, of course, its budget, its budget-friendly price was great. But it's, it was also relatively good gain. So it had a lot of headroom along with quiet noise floor, which also tends to not be a thing very often. So you, you either have a really quiet mic and therefore the output's a little quieter too, or you know, condenser microphones, we have a, a lot of headroom in, in it versus a dynamic microphone. But when you can maximize that entire return, uh, it, just, it just screams great. For voiceover especially, when you throw it into a digital microphone like you're talking about, one that can save it in post, you have to have a quiet microphone. You can't do it otherwise. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, we're we're going to take a break right now, and uh, and then we're going to get couple, to questions. And then we get we have a pile of questions. Can can Ryan stick around for a while? I don't know. Maybe? Do you really want to? I have a few minutes. I have a few minutes. I'd love to answer a few. All right. All right. We'll see if we can get him to stick around a little longer. <laughs> All right. We'll be right back after these messages. Do not go away. From Voice this Over- is Ariana Ratner, and you're enjoying Voice Over Body Shop with Dan Leonard and George Whittem. VOBS.TV. Setting up for voiceover recording on the road can be a real hassle. You can't bring your boom stand with you. The solution? After six long months, Harlan Hogan's VoiceOverEssentials.com finally has their popular desktop stand back in stock. The Harlan Hogan Adjustable Height Desktop Stand fits U.S. and all international microphones with its thread adapter. It features quick assembly and has a low center of gravity for great stability, making it great for home and on the road. The two-way adjustable desk stand gives you infinite height adjustment from 5.5 to 8.75 inches, and the rubber-ringed low-profile base fits perfectly into the pre-cut desk stand slot of both the Portabooth Pro and Plus. They're back, and they're keeping the pre-shortage price. Damn inflation has become their motto. The Harlan Hogan Adjustable Height Desktop Mic Stand. Just $39.95 and only at voiceoveressentials.com. All right, well, I'll put the camera on me because it's all about me and our friends at Source Connect. Actually, at Source Elements. The company is Source Elements. The product is Source Connect. And the other product that uh, is being used still today 
by a lot of productions is Source Nexus. Think of Source Nexus as a switchboard that lets engineers and producers bring audio in and out of things like Pro Tools or whatever their multi-track recording environment is and makes it much easier for them to create this sometimes challenging signal routing and have it all happen inside the system. Well, this is an amazing technology. Something that the actor is, it's really transparent to the actor because it's happening on the studio end, but it makes it much easier. At the end of the day though, the one that you are going to be most concerned about learning and using is Source Connect. Now, getting on board with Source Connect has been made a lot easier, partly because they've got a lot more support over at Source Elements. There's a lot more people over there that are there to help you. So if you want to get their help, I highly recommend that you do start out with a subscription. Yes, you can get a 15-day free trial, but if you start with a subscription, which starts at around $100, you will now actually have their support to walk you through a tremendous amount of stuff. And let's face it, their support is award-winning. I was just <laughs> nominated for best service provider at One Voice Conference along with Source Elements, and they won second year in a row because people love their support. Anyway, if you want to check them out, go over to source-elements.com, and we really want to thank them for helping us out here. And let's get back to those questions right after this. Yeah, do, do, do. Oh, hey, uh, I am about to shoot uh, the fourth of five lessons in this year's big old course that I'm giving away for free called Getting Started in VO, Thriving in the AI World, where we meet what it takes to get into the world of voiceover, what it takes to be better at voiceover with the incursion of artificial intelligence and maybe some things that you can take advantage of in terms of artificial intelligence as well. So uh, we're in the midst, it's been a, it's been a banger. We're, we're in the midst of five lessons, all free. Uh, if you go to voheroes.com slash go, you'll get those lessons. And it will culminate with the opportunity to join as a VO Heroes Pro at a very special price with some very special bonuses. But first, take the free class. Just go to voheroes.com slash go. That's voheroes.com slash go. And I'll see you for all five lessons. And let's see what happens with your VO career. Hi, this is Bill Farmer, and you are watching Voice Over Body Shop. It's great. And we're back. And we are back. And uh, Ryan White is joining us from Road. We've got lots and lots of questions here. Yes, we uh, do. Starting, starting off with Chris Dempsey, who says, I'm new to voiceover and building a home studio. Sometimes you don't put the cart before the horse. you got to be good at voiceover before you build the studio. Now, this is the interesting part. He says, I see a pile of information on how to build a home studio, but not seeing anything showing how to break it in. Well, first off, how to build a home voiceover studio. Talk to somebody who actually knows what that means, which is, according to, from what I can see, it's a handful of people on the face of the earth that truly understand what a home voiceover studio is supposed to be. It is not supposed to be something with a huge board and, and processors and all these different things, although the, the Rode Procaster and Procaster 2 and Duo probably do a great job with that and, and probably give you everything you need that every time you walk into a recording studio and you see in the wall and the racks, it's all pretty much reduced down to something small. But the question is, how do you break it in? By this, I mean, what recording should I do first? I suppose recording the room would be a start. What am I looking for? How would you set things up, hardware and software? Well, that's a lot of questions, George. And it goes on. I am and using goes, the Rode NT 1G5, <laughs> as you reviewed a few shows ago, with a Scarlett 2i2 third gen audio interface into a Windows 10 laptop with Audacity. I'm really enjoying your show, and I feel like I'm getting a lot out of it. Okay, thanks for that. Well, okay. Um, <laughs> yeah, you, you're you asking a mountain of questions, a mountain of things in one question. So where you should start is simple. Um, that's why the Rode NTG, NT1, sorry, NT, this is the NT, by the way, if you're wondering, this is the Rode NTG5. This is a shotgun microphone. It's a great mic, but it's not the first mic I do recommend a voice actor starting with because... Mic technique on a mic like this is a bit more challenging. You have to be on target. 
If you move off target, the sound changes dramatically. That's why as I'm sitting here uh, interviewing Ryan, I have to be really careful to talk over, to talk, make, sound, on, axis. <laughs> I did. No I rehearsal. Just making noises. <laughs> exactly. You have to be really on target and on axis with a mic like this because it sounds off. It sounds out of focus. With a large diaphragm condenser like the NT1, it's going to be much easier to work with because you have a wider pickup pattern, right? If I was to plug this in, and I can do this because I'm, I'm a stunt man. With a mic like this, I can move the mic around and I can physically move around the microphone tremendously without sounding off microphone. Go and ahead, this is go ahead and talk to the to the back of it like right. you told us. About. However, if you speak if you don't speak into the gold dot, <laughs> this is what you're gonna get. Um, so it's a very strange sound. There's a little low there's some low end, a little bit of high end, and a giant hole in the middle, uh, which is where your voice resides. So if you hear this, you know you're talking to the wrong side of the mic. So first start with the mic pointing the right way. Start with the mic at a decent distance. I like to start here, and if your booth is not great, if you're in a closet or something, maybe start here distance-wise, okay? Now, you also have a Scarlet. You can use them together, and it depends on your workflow. Sometimes having an interface outside of the mic is nice because you have a, a physical gain knob. However, I am gonna do some tutorial videos soon on George the Tech that are about recording with this mic plugged in with USB and talking about how 32-bit float will make your life easier. Because one of the things that you know Dan and I deal with all the time is teaching people how to set their gain. And it seems like it should be easy conceptually, and we talk about it ad nauseum. But if you don't learn how to do that first, after you learn about mic technique and stuff, you're gonna get some crappy recordings. So we can't get into the depth of it here, we're here to tell you about how to get us when you need and when you want to learn and to get into depth with it. That's why we're here to introduce you to our services. But we, we hope you, you know, aren't too intimidated with, the, with voiceover technology. You have to keep in mind, there's a lot of people in voiceover who also love the technology. I deal with the majority of the folks who don't love the technology who find it intimidating, scary, uh, and confusing. So if you're feeling a little bit more on that direction, you might want to work with Dan or I, because we're here to, to help you navigate that stuff. Absolutely, yeah. And it's, there's a lot to learn. Uh, but you got to be careful when you go on the internet. There's a tremendous amount of misinformation out there. You know, you're not doing rap videos, you're doing voiceover. There's a lot of different techniques and stuff like that. But yeah. you got to learn if you're doing voiceover you have to really learn the techniques and the proper setup for and there's for a lot voiceover. you know on the internet there's a, and the forums and the groups and the YouTubes and now the discord uh, channels and servers there's a lot of one wayism you know because you'll hear yeah. one person who's a, a working actor and they like to kind of share how they do it and so you'll feel like oh if I don't buy what they're using and don't choose what they're using I may not have a chance at getting that great audio so, you know, a little investment in some consulting with Dan or I is absolutely going to be worth it in the long run. You won't overspend, you won't buy the wrong stuff, and your room will be dialed in. And that's what's so important. So we, we really know whistle. Dan's coined the phrase whistle. I love it. We know what it's supposed to sound like. And we will teach you that so that you recognize that in your studio and in your headphones when you record. Until you know that, you're going to be lost in the dark because you'll never even know why it doesn't sound the way it's supposed to sound and you won't be able to get there. So mm. we hope that helps a little bit. All righty. Let's get on to the next question. Yeah. Patricia Andrea, who always has a great question, has a really good question. It's, she says, where do we learn about terminology like leads, loops and things like that? Well, li watching our show probably is one place to start. But what are some other places you can I think mean, of? I mean, there are glossaries. Um, 
Does Road have a terminology glossary on their site? We we don't, and it's one of the things not not that I can think of right off the top of my head actually. And it's going to be one of the things that I'll find like on our blog site because we do have a blog site and everything like that as well. So you know, um, yeah, I always lead people to our YouTube channel because it is uh, verified. And it's the information where you're yeah. going to get it from Road. Yeah. Even if it is some content creator, it is verified by us about the truth of what you're seeing and what right. you're hearing. So as far as the glossaries, not uh, not a dictionary of Road terms. Yeah. I, I, I had one on my last website. And when we built the new website, we have to populate that on the new site. And it's just been to- so time consuming. <laughs> so we do have a glossary of audio terms on georgelee.tech. It's just rather incomplete for now until we populate the entire thing. So one of these days <laughs> I'll get around to filling it in. But if you do go over there, go to the resources page at georgelee.tech and check out the glossary. There's a start to it. It's just not as comprehensive as we'd like it to be. Yeah. Uh, next question from Fiber Jazz. Uh, I heard someone say not to rely on Wi-Fi to plug direct and to plug directly into the internet. Does that mean to unplug my modem and plug my computer into that jack? Sorry, just trying to learn this tech stuff. Okay. Oh, sure. So you got you got your Cat5 cable here, which is this guy. And uh, you go into your... Depends on what you're using. If you have a router, you plug it into the router. Or if you go... Or you can go directly into the modem. Uh, but it Any depends on what kind of a modem you have. They're going to have a router. Yeah. Yeah. If you've got a router, you, you just plug it right in. You... You have a, a you have a Cat5 jack on your computer or a USB adapter for that, and that goes the other end goes into the modem, and yeah, I think George, I think he's primarily probably talking about Source Connect, and uh, that you really do have to have a, a hard line for that. We definitely recommend a hard wire connection for not just Source Connect but any real time audio or video transmission. I've been I've been flying without a net tonight. I'm using the actual convention Wi-Fi, which is generally considered it's working absolutely out okay. not a good idea. But the good thing is I'm one of the only people probably <laughs> on the connection right now because it's before the show starts. We'll see how it goes in the next couple of days, right? But because I'm ver- there's very few people here, I have a good Wi-Fi connection. At home, if your router is nearby and you're not ha- you don't have a family of seven watching Netflix and playing games your Wi-Fi will probably be fine. But if you're unlucky and your Wi-Fi router is at the other corner of your house. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah, funny anecdote was that my wife was like, why are you drilling in... Why are you drilling (laughs) holes in our walls? Yeah, and I was literally running uh, the the internet from our farthest, like, northeast, you know, corner to the southwest corner upstairs just to get a wired Ethernet pour it upstairs where my office is and where my home studio is because that's all I'm doing 24-7. That's my job. Yeah, we want the fattest, fastest, but also the most reliable pipe, and that's still going to be a hardwired connection. So we recommend it, and that's what you got to do. There are some adapters. There's something called a Powerline Ethernet adapter. I've hooked them up for a lot of people, and the pro of those is you're not wireless. You actually are on a wire technically because it's using your household wire. However, your household wiring for the internet, however, the speeds usually suffer when you're using those. So they're good for consistency and they'll work great for Source Connect, but for just sheer speed, uploading, downloading files, they're usually nowhere near as fast. So there you go. All righty. Lots of great questions. Here's an interesting one, because you were talking about this the other day, George. It's uh, from Jonathan Grant, who's watching on YouTube. He says, hi, guys. An update on the UPS RFI problem. That's the UPS meaning Un- the uninterruptible power, power supply, supply, not the brown trucks. Right. Uh, this unit was actually in the next room at my development desk, not plugged into the wall, running on battery, and still emitting RF. When it's time to replace the battery, toss that thing in the garbage if you have a mic in the same building. Thanks for being awesome. Thoughts on that? Yeah. <laughs> I... I uh, once in a blue moon, we find out that the thing making the noise is the thing that we bought to hope that there would be no noise. There's a lot of UPSs out there. Um, the best ones are, they'll have power filtration. They, may have, they might have AVR, which is automatic voltage regulation. And the really good ones are what we call online pure sign UPSs. Those are the expensive ones. They're not the ones you're gonna get at Staples. 
you're going to have to buy these online through a, a computer retailer. But what those do is they actually take the power coming in, convert it to DC, I believe, is what's happening. It's, it's, so in that process, the power is basically being scrubbed, right? Yep. And then it's converted back to AC internally in a very clean, pure way. So what you end up getting is this purified power. And um, those are really expensive. And I've even found that those units themselves make noise. <laughs> so you buy one, you put it in your studio, you get rid of noise, and the thing's over here with a fan running or it's buzzing. <laughs> so whatever you do, try to eliminate the gear with the most complexity because sometimes that's what's causing noise. And in, your, in his case, it was the UPS. Anytime anybody texts uh, Road Gear, I ask them to take it to their... Uh, their largest room that's most isolated from anything really and just get it on its own isolated power and, and everything. You just gotta, you gotta get kind of get clean your power. audio gear away from things if you're having problems. And get it away from the fridge. Yep. Absolutely. Right. I think we can squeeze made. in one or two more questions. Oh, we, we got time here for a few more. Uh, uh, you get the one from Ellen Cochran here. All right, 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 we're going to have an impact hammer going. Yeah. Uh, hey guys, <laughs> I like the hairdos you had on your website pictures last week. Why, well, thank you. Yeah. Uh, what technology would you suggest for a newbie to replace a laptop with a noisy fan without breaking the budget? Well, mm. budget, you really need to be specific about budget because there are budget points all over the board. Um, I'm always going to be going Apple. Just let me get that right out of the gate. I'm going to be recommending an Apple, and I'm going to be recommending to you get a MacBook Air first gen. Uh, it's called the M1 series. Um, absolutely fanless. You can find them brand new. I think at Costco is doing like seven fifty. Yeah, saw it this last wow. weekend. Seven hundred something like that. Yeah. Seven hundred dollars for yeah. a brand new MacBook Air. And if you if you're really resourceful, you might be able to find a refurbished one. Maybe save a hundred bucks. But I'm telling you, these things they're only a couple years old. The new M the uh, silicon series, they're all fanless. And because they've only been out a couple of years, and their value has held even a used one is going to be very close to the cost of a new one. So if you do get one refurbed, make sure it's a place that's going to support it. Get it directly from Apple. Look at their refurb store and you can save a little bit. But honestly, go that way. It's, you can get a Microsoft Surface uh, tablet or computer if you want to go Windows. You're not going to save any money. Um, the fanless ones are going to be in that same price, seven, 800 price point to begin with. Um, how about, do you know of anything that's really great on no. the family side on no, Windows? No, I, I do apologize as well. I'm, I'm a Windows fan for, for other reasons, but I'm a Mac fan first and foremost for audio and especially for uh, rigidity, you know, and many different reasons. So um, I've it's always just been less Apple. variables. It's so, way less variables, and it's just so sturdy. But, uh, again, there's many ways you can buy it to where it's affordable like that. I bought a supercomputer HP laptop just trying to – do business it wasn't really for audio but you know I'm, i teach audio that's what i do and so when that fan just started kicking in it was game over and yeah. it, it it was always on i thought it was going to be fast enough to not have to have the fan every se second of the day and it needed the fan every second of the day so i already had spent the money and still had the fan issues so yeah yeah so be cautious of of those kind of items you'll waste yeah. your money on it yeah. well you also t george you always like talking about getting a used one uh, or a refurbished one because you can get it even even cheaper too. For well, that's for the thing. Like Mac. they're so new that even the used ones. Let's put it this way: I just sold a used MacBook Air M1. <laughs> I bought it like the day they came out. I got eight hundred dollars for it. So <laughs> their Great. resale value is amazing. Yeah, right? they're like Hondas. So, yeah, yeah, they they really hold their value. So buying a used one doesn't really save you that much money. I think they got a good deal because I got it with an upgraded amount of memory. I usually try to go to 16 gigabytes of memory because I do a lot of multitasking. I use Google Chrome uh, and I use a lot of tabs. So I use a lot of memory. Yeah. Um, two more questions. Let's see if we can bang those out. Yeah, no, this is, this is a great question because I deal with this one all the time. Uh, from Daniel Russo on YouTube. He has a 6x6 DIY booth. I have pyramid and line pattern foam tiles. Half and half on patterns. Nice. Can you mix them? Pyramid and lines foam. Oh my God! Different Don't sound results. A <laughs> different sound result if mixed, or is it trial and it's error sound? I don't think it really makes a big difference. Nah. You can nah. arrange them any pattern you want. Yeah. 
Oralex or you know the, the the foam is generally designed to absorb and diffuse sound. You and really got to look at who made these foam tiles. Yeah, it's some like of them are better than others. Yeah, if they thickness. don't. Yeah, thickness. Thickness is important. Mm-hmm. If they're one inch thick, almost useless. Mm-hmm. Two inch, starting to get there. Three and four inch. Now you're getting somewhere that these are really going to be effective. But you got to look who makes them because foam isn't foam isn't foam. There's many types of foam. And some foam is almost completely useless. Other actually works. Make sure that whoever you're getting from has NRC rating information along with that foam and make sure it's actually going to be a foam. Yeah. Don't, don't get obsessive about the patterns because, you know, as I like to say, no one needs to see how the sausage is made <laughs> or where it's made. Yeah, just make it look cool. Okay, <laughs> yeah. if you've got to be on camera, make it look cool. Cool. Great. Otherwise, it doesn't really matter. That, that doesn't really matter. Yeah. All right, last one is on point, is on brand for, for road. So we got the man here to answer this question. This is from our very own Jeff Holman that manages our, our chat room. Oh, wonderful. He's the guy who stuck his head up at the beginning and said tech tech. Uh, <laughs> the Rodin T1 5th Gen uh, only uses, utilizes 32-bit float through the USB connection, right? Um, is that USB from the mic, does that go to the interface, or does that USB go straight into the computer? And lastly... Can I get it to go through the interface so I can use the way my Personas, use the way it with, with my Personas audio interface? So can you demystify that in 30 seconds? Jeff, that's a wonderful question. We get it every single time we have this conversation. Dual Connect is two choices. They are not one or the other doing 32-bit float. So XLR is XLR is XLR. So if you run the XLR, you would go to your interface. Then your interface that it's plugging into, say your Personas, would need to do 32-bit float. Because the Which microphone, it doesn't. there you go. <laughs> exactly. I happen to know that. Yep. The USB-C is an audio interface. It turns this microphone, if you will, into an audio interface. So therefore, the Personas or the other interface that you might plug it into is no longer relevant in that conversation. And that is when you would do 32-bit float. Because this audio interface can do 32-bit float. I know. It's a little... We, again, I'm going to be... I promise I'm going to do a very demystifying video showing uh, workflows of how to use 32-bit float effectively in your studio, but uh, we'll get to that. Yeah. So, all right. Well, hey, Ryan, thanks for joining us tonight. You thanks, know. dude. Thank thanks you for, for having around for It's the been Q&A. great. I look forward yeah. to our next couple days. Yeah, me too. Yeah. Gotta love this thing. This is the best arm I have ever used. Yes. <laughs> yeah, the PSA one. It's a well-built. Well we have built 13, o- 11 of them over here on our booth. <laughs> yeah. Come see us. All righty. Okay, well, we're going to take a quick break, and we're going to wrap things up right after this. So don't go away. We'll be right back on VoiceOver Body Shop. Hi, this is Bill Farmer, and you are watching VoiceOver Body Shop. It's great. Your dynamic voiceover career requires extra resources to keep moving ahead. There's one place where you can explore everything the voiceover industry has to offer. That place is voiceoverextra.com. Whether you're just exploring a voiceover career or a seasoned veteran ready to reach that next professional level, stay in touch with market trends, coaching, products, and services while avoiding scams and other pitfalls. VoiceOver Extra has hundreds of articles, free resources, and training that will save you time and help you succeed. Learn from the most respected talents, coaches, and industry insiders when you join the online sessions bringing you the most current information on topics like audiobooks, auditioning, home studio setup, and equipment, marketing, performance techniques, and much more. It's time to hit your one-stop daily resource for voiceover success. Sign up for a free subscription to newsletters and reports. It's all here at voiceoverextra.com. That's voiceoverxtra.com. All right, I'm here to talk about these guys. Voiceactor.com. What is voiceactor.com? Well, voiceactor.com is a way to get your voice actor website up and running really, really fast. Uh, you have to have a website as a voice actor. You, you, you don't want to just have something on Facebook or LinkedIn saying, yeah, I'm a voice actor. You've got to show your professionalism by having a very professional website. That's your business card. So if you don't have one, you need to get one. And if you need to get one fast, as opposed to the like five or six months it takes with everybody else, go to voiceactor.com because what they have are templated websites it's you don't have to go in there and design all this stuff you have a lot of creative 
uh, flexibility with it. There's different colors and you can put your pictures in, but it's lots of different templates that can make you look great. But most importantly, you put your demos there and your name and your contact information and get yourself on the internet like that. Go over to voiceactor.com. You can start for free, absolutely free, and get your site on the internet. And then they have some other other plans like $20 a month. You get some more features with that and you get a great website. Go over to voiceactor.com right now or when you have a chance and get your website up and running in no time. We are the World Voices Organization, also, also known, known as Wovo. We're the not-for-profit industry association of freelance voice talent. VoiceOver is a complex entrepreneurial business. Wovo is there to promote the professional nature of voice work to the public, to those already established in their voiceover practice, and to those who want to pursue voiceover as a career. Membership benefits include a supportive and creative community, a profile and demos on voiceover.biz, our searchable directory of vetted professional voice talent, our exclusive demo player for your personal website. Our mentoring program, business resources, and our video library. Our annual WovoCon conference, a fun and educational weekend with other members with, with the chance, chance to, to learn, learn and, and network. network. Webinars and great speakers and weekly social chats with other members around the world. If your world is voiceover, make Wovo part of it. World Voices Organization. We, we speak, speak for those who speak, speak for a living. living. This is the Latin lover narrator from Jane the Virgin, Anthony Mendez, and you're enjoying Dan and George on The Voice of Our Body Shop. All righty. Well, that was a great tech talk. Kevin Ryan on was just fabulous because he knows his stuff. Nice opportunity, yeah. I've been wanting to have him on some of our shows, and this was a kismet, so. Perfect. Absolutely. All righty. Well, we have to remember to plug ourselves, like homevoiceoverstudio.com because that's where I do my business, and George is over at georgethe.tech. Yipper. And actually, if you call our emergency support line, there's a chance you might actually get Dan, because he's, he's in our emergency support phone system now. This is Can't something we don't talk about that. much, but if you call the 424 number on the site, uh, or any on any, if you see the 424-226-8528 number, and you're like, you're like, I am screwed, if I don't get my studio online in the next 10 to 15 minutes, that's the number to call. Um, we will get somebody to you through our dispatch service, a live human dispatch service that will get you to somebody when you need it. Um, and for those who do need it, it's a lifesaver. It's sort of an audio ambulance, if it were. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And if you need a good actor, you can uh, <laughs> go to IMDb and Jeff Holman because... He's a great As actor. seen on TV. Well, yeah, a lot of stuff. A lot of, and, and on the big silver screen. That's right. All righty. What else we got going on here? Oh, we need to thank our donors of the week. You can donate to our show. Doesn't have to be a lot. Uh, you can set up automatic payments or send us a large donation at once. Several thousand dollars would be nice. But you can do a <laughs> dollar a month or a 10 cents yeah. a week or something like that. Go to our webpage and go to Donate Now. Uh, and uh, help and we'll us read your maintain. Name. <laughs> yeah. and we'll read your name every uh, every show. Every week, like Greg Cooper. Grace Newton. Christopher Epperson. Robert Leadham. Stephen Chandler. Casey Clack. Jonathan Grant. Thomas Pinto. Greg Thomas. A Doctor Voice. Antland Productions. Martha Kahn. 949 Designs. Sarah Borges. Philip Sapir. Brian Page. Rob Ryder. Shauna Pennington Baird. Don Griffith. Trey Mosley, Diana Birdsall, Maria Mackis, and Sandra Manwiller. Thank yes. you all for your contributions to maintaining this great show that we've been doing for so many years. Need to thank our sponsors like Harlan Hogan's VoiceOver Essentials, VoiceOver Extra, Source Elements, VOHeroes.com, VoiceActor.com, and, and WorldVoices.org. It's World-Voices.org. That's of which right. I am the president, I had to mention that, you know, because, you know, I, I'm, I'm in charge of that right now. Lots of responsibility. we got some great stuff, some new things that we're going to tell you about uh, as, uh, as time goes on. So join Sign us, up. become part of the organization. Uh, we need to thank Jeff Holman uh, for doing a great job in the chat room tonight. We really appreciate that. Uh, Sue Merlino, who 
came you, home. Came, thank you, Sue. She's been a busy lady. She got herself yeah. a new job, but she will be here with us in perpetuity. She cannot leave us. It's Whatever not possible. And, uh, so we appreciate all she does yeah. for us. And Lee Penny just for being Lee Penny. Well, yeah. you know something? This is not an easy business. There's so many people trying to get into voiceover, and they think it's easy, and it really isn't. But the technology, yeah, look at this. I mean, what, what have we got going on here? Talk about technology. There's a lot of technology shoved into one hall. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> there's so much technology, but how do you sort it out? All, all, sort it all out? How do you get your, the stuff you need? There's only one way. You talk to us. You know, homevoiceoverstudio.com or georgethe.tech. You'll find us. We'll help you out. But the bottom line is, if it sounds good, it is good. I'm Dan Leonard. And I'm George Whittem. And this is VoiceOver. Body Shop. Or VO. BS. Tech Talk. Tech Talk. Tech Talk. Tech Talk. There he is. Tech Talk. Tech Talk. Yes. Tech Talk. Tech Talk. Tech Talk. All right. Have yourselves a great week, everybody. And that's why we'll that's why Minx had him on the show. That's right. Right there. Because he just looks like that. Boom. I'm Dan Leonard. I'm George Whittem. And this is VoiceOver. Body Shop. Or VO. BS. Yes. Tech Talk. Tech Talk. See you later. Cheers.